you're a change manager and you're not failing, you're probably doing something wrong. Change management isn't about coming up with this big final solution that's just going to work like that. It's a series of lots of experiments that happen along the way. And the traditional motivational methods that we employ in all other elements of work just don't work in the context of change management. Yes, we can set smart goals. Yes, we can incentivize performance. But this is, this is fine if it, the work is linear. Um, but we're looking at non-linear work that's probably failure rich. Every single failure that you have is an opportunity to learn. The key thing that we need to do is destigmatize failure. I remember I was working with this client, an innovation uh, project, multi-million dollar innovation project, in which lots of talented people just weren't getting progress happening. They weren't getting things done because they were fixated upon goals and they weren't meeting those goals. And so they felt that they were failing and they had a stigma around failure. And therefore, people didn't want to share what they were learning on. When I, when I came in and worked with them, we, the first thing we did was recalibrate our focus. If you want to lead change, if you want to lead and do pioneering work where you're doing things new, we need to focus on visibility of progress. This is the number one breakthrough idea from the Harvard Business Review. The more that we focus on progress, the more that we can connect people's effort to a meaningful sense of progress, the more likely they are to put in effort. And so what we did with this particular team is just set up a new daily ritual, a stand-up meeting in front of a big progress wall in which everyone talked about what do I achieve yesterday, what, did I, what am I working on today. This simple cultural innovation meant that people, if they were making mistakes, it wasn't something that they were hiding, that they were keeping for the next monthly meeting, they were, they were owning it and they were sharing the learnings, which meant that, the, meant that they progressed a lot quicker. It meant that they were more ap adaptive, uh, agile and nimble, and they made things happen. This is something that I consider, if you're a change manager, if you're in the space of change management, you need to treat it almost like a game. Think about it like a game designer. All games are a combination of goals, rules and feedback. A, a good game is a goal-driven, challenge-intense and feedback-rich experience geared towards progress. And as part of the journey within these games, within any any game, there are stumble points, there are mistakes that we make, there are things that we learn. If we're treating it like this goal, success, failure thing, then we're going to fall into dark territory. We're going to have people not performing because they're too afraid to fail. Now, in science, there's no such thing as failure. There's, there's only disproven hypotheses. The opposite of success is not failure, it's apathy, it's the non-doing of things. If you want to fail something in science, you actually need to do stuff, you need to collect evidence. And so this is the approach that we need to take. Think like a game designer, work like a scientist. Think about what are the experiments that you can conduct that will help to build evidence and momentum for the change that you want to bring about. One of my clients uh, is a multinational restaurant company that we're looking at significantly changing the culture of their work. Now this is too big a concept to bring up in the traditional pathways. And uh, we're all, if you're in change management, you're a fan of Cotter's Eight Steps of Change. We all love that and it works brilliantly. But sometimes what we need to do is conduct mini experiments, create these little games in which we're testing ideas. If we're failing them, we're learning. If we're succeeding, we're learning. In any event, we're learning and the organization learns from the progress made within these experiments. One of my clients is doing this just now and it's a tipping point for a major cultural revolution within this multinational company. And it comes through conducting experiments. This is something that you can apply at any level. And I've worked with a manufacturing client that uh, was looking at increasing safety of their work. Now, safety, safety is a behavior that we want people to do because it's the right thing to do. The last thing you want to do is go and set a goal for safety and incentivize it somehow. Unfortunately, that's what, we're, what we saw happening with this client. They had that in place, a wonderful intention, but the result was people were gaming the system. People were finding out ways to circumvent the intent of the game and were reporting brilliant progress, but in reality, the behavior weren't matching it. So they recalibrated. They put the spotlight on progress rather than success. They found stories that exemplified the types of behaviours that they were looking for. We, we got them starting a quarterly comic book that, that celebrated some of the stories of good safety behaviours within this work environment. Now these are all different lenses that we can apply here. The key thing is, if you're in change management, you don't have to simply follow the le default linear pathway. You can think more like a scientist. You can think more like a game designer, explore new pathways to make change happen.